Okay, well now that we've achieved some measure of success as far as our airflow goes and our idle speed, what we see now is that we've got the condition where the idle hangs. So we'll show you exactly why that happens and how to correct it. To begin, what we're going to do is back up to the engine section here. Now, instead of going to idle where we've been dealing with so far, we're going to scooch along to the right and get over to Spark. Spark, obviously, you've got Spark Advanced. These are our ignition timing tables that it opens up. Now, immediately below here on this top left section, you'll find Main Spark Advanced, High Octane, Low Octane. We're not going to concern ourselves with that right now because those tables are used when you're actually on the pedal. You're off idle. So what we're going to do is concentrate a little bit further down here. When you go further down on the left side here, you'll notice idle spark advance here on the side. You've got in drive, in park, obviously for those two situations, those two conditions. Beneath that, you'll see the idle adaptive spark control. Now, to give you an idea what's going on, when we're at idle here, typical load ranges at idle for an LS engine are going to be between 0.6 and 0.28 grams per cylinder per second. That's on most engines, regardless whether it's 5.7 to 7 liter. You're always in that range. And in our case, we're looking at 775 RPM, 750 RPM. So basically, we're dealing primarily with this little range right here, as far as our idle ignition timing is concerned. Now, what happens is when we blip the throttle, again, load is referenced on the y-axis here. When we blip the throttle, airflow is, of course, climbing, and the engine speed is climbing, which, of course, on the x-axis, What's basically happening is the computer is reading the table down in this direction. So when you blip the throttle, it'll pop up this way, but it'll come back and you're going to be at a normal idle load range on your way back. This is where the hanging is occurring is 1200 RPM to 1000 RPM. Reason being because we got 22 degrees of timing in here. This is the factory setting. We, in fact, don't want this amount. What we want to do is basically pull four or five degrees out of this section to make sure that when the engine speed gets down to this level, it's going to help the idle control by taking ignition value. Obviously, taking ignition timing away is going to reduce torque at the crank. That's going to help the deceleration of the engine. Now, again, when the computer was dealing with this on its own without us making this change, it was looking at these tables. It saw that the vehicle was hanging. The engine was hanging. It was hanging by about 200 RPM. So it was then commanding 15 degrees of ignition timing to be pulled out. This, of course, decelerates the engine, and as the engine decelerates towards our target idle speed, it ramps out that ignition timing removal and gets you back up to your base timing advance. So now in this case, when we make this change, what we've done here in park, we're going to do the same thing in drive. This way, we end up basically having a table that preempts that hanging position because we're basically depriving the engine of the ignition timing it needs to hang. So by depriving it of that ignition timing, engine speed should return nice and quick. These tables here, you're going to have to trim them out, obviously, for your particular application. It does change from car to car. Obviously, you know, cam to cam, engine to engine. Every engine's like a snowflake. None of them are the same. So when you end up having a rough setting, this gives you in the ballpark. And then, of course, from here, you can fine-tune it a little bit. It's an iterative process, but at least now that you understand why the engine hangs and what you've got, the tools that you've got available to deal with it, this should be a walk in the park. So... Let's do this now. Basically, we're going to go back. We're going to save this file. As always, save it with a new name so that you know that you've made the appropriate change. Once you've made that change, save it. We're going to go to write calibration, write this into the car. And of course, once we've loaded this, uploaded this calibration in the car, let's go back to the video and see exactly how the car behaves, see if we've licked this problem once and for all.